welcome to Delivering Miracles, a podcast to teach women like you tips and strategies on how you can have a safer pregnancy so you can bring home a healthy baby. I'm your host and your high-risk pregnancy expert, Parijat Deshpande. I can't wait to chat with you. I was at my son's occupational therapy appointment not too long ago. And his therapist was talking, I forget how this started, but she was talking about how, you know, when people get sick, how we go to the doctor and we get prescribed antibiotics. Like for a sinus infection, you might get a Z-pack or for other kinds of infections, they, they very standardly prescribe penicillin right? Something like that. And she was talking about how she's appalled at the fact that everybody gets prescribed the same medication for the same issues at the same dosage, regardless of size or body composition or medical history or anything like that, that um, unless you know of something why you cannot take this standard medication. Like for example, I'm allergic to penicillin, so I can never take penicillin, amoxicillin, any of that. But unless you have something like that, you get prescribed exactly the same thing as everybody else. And she was just like, this boggles my mind. How is it that this day and age in our medical system, we have no customizability when it comes to treating illness? How is it that we still think prescribing the same thing to everybody across the board for the most part is going to actually help everybody? And I thought that was a really interesting point because it's something I've been thinking about a lot. And I don't think it's something a lot of people think about until you realize that the medical system, the way that it is, cannot help everyone. I think until you actually physically experience the limitations of medical science as it stands today, you don't really stop to question it, right? And I know that for couples who are going through fertility treatment, if you're going through a high-risk pregnancy, if you've had a preterm birth, those are some examples of when you really hit up against the edge of medical science and you hear way too often, we don't know. We don't know why this is happening. We don't know why this happens. We don't know what to expect. We have to wait and see. When I was going through my high-risk pregnancy and I was seeing the MFM, the maternal fetal medicine specialist or the high risk OB. I was seeing her weekly, if not twice a week. I could not believe how often I heard, we don't know why this is happening. We have to wait and see. And I'll be honest, there was a moment where I was like, is she lying to me? Is she hiding something from me that I should know, but she doesn't want me to know about? I mean, I loved her and we're friends now. So I know, and I knew back then too, that she's a great person and she's a really good doctor and she was very well educated. I specifically sought her out because of her experience, but I couldn't believe it. How is it that this day and age, you don't know so much? How is that possible? How is that possible? Especially when somebody's life or two people's lives are in danger or hanging in the balance, how do you not know? But we don't. But we don't because research is really limited in this population when it comes to fertility, when it comes to pregnancy, when it comes to children. You can't do all the research that you want, whenever you want, however you want to prove that something works. To even get the approval for this research takes a long time and is sometimes downright impossible because you could be putting your 
subjects is what they're called in research, you, you know, you you could be putting lives in a precarious situation where you're never going to get the approval to do the research to begin with. So after that appointment, when I was talking to his therapist, and I was kind of thinking about what she was saying about the the antibiotics and all that. After that, I was on Facebook and my friend Ajay posted this and, and with his approval, I'm sharing this with you today. He said, oh, I'm so tired of people saying alternative therapies or treatments are not worthwhile because there's no evidence for them. No evidence does not mean something does not work. Science can be slow sometimes and a lot of what gets studied is dependent on who has the money. People have been benefiting from meditation for over 2,500 years before there was evidence for it. If these people had adopted the approach of today's scientific evidence-based fundamentalists, they would have missed out on a lot. Be willing to trust your experience. Try different things out with the discernment, of course. You might be surprised what works for you. And I jumped up and was like, hallelujah, yes. <laughs> He said this so perfectly because this is something that I have been feeling since I went through my fertility treatment the first time around. When I went through my high-risk pregnancy with my kiddo after he was born, extremely preterm. And since then, when we've been having to take care of his medical issues that not all doctors are able to explain. And the... the what comes up and what I've realized is that we've stopped being able to think critically about our health. And we just blindly put our lives in someone else's hands thinking they have all the answers and they don't. They don't. Our doctors do not have all the answers. Research does not have all the answers. And I'm not saying this to bash the medical field or to bash research. I would not have a child if it were not for our medical system, okay? But what I am saying is that we cannot just rely on one source of information and assume that that's going to give us all the answers that we need. If something is that important to you, like getting pregnant, keeping yourself pregnant, getting the best care to help your child grow and thrive, whatever that is, Focus on the end goal that's most important. Do your homework and keep an open mind about how that can be possible for you and then throw everything at it. Throw everything at it. Why wouldn't you do that? If it's that important to you, if it's that important to you to get pregnant, why wouldn't you try everything that's safe to try? You know why? Because it's scary. It's scary as hell. When I was younger, I was a teenager, maybe 14, 15 years old. I've always had severe food allergies, like anaphylactic severe, my whole life. And my parents, I wouldn't say they got sick of it, but they wanted a better life for me. And it's hard because what I'm allergic to, most of that food is actually within our ethnic culture. I'm Indian. And so most of that food is within our culture. And so for festivals and events and holidays, it's really hard for me to go to people's houses because I'm severely allergic to most of the food that's there. And so for whatever the reason was, whether they were sick of it or they just wanted a better life for me or they just wanted to find a way to help me be in, you know, part of everything and everybody's celebrations, they said, hey, you know what? We know a doctor in India who is a gold medalist homeopathic physician. And she's really good at curing food allergies. Now, we were told by my allergist here that you cannot cure full food allergies. They do not go away. Once you have them, you have them for life. 
But they had done their homework. They talked to a bunch of people who had been her patients. They talked to people back home in India. They talked to some of their friends here. And actually, I think there were a couple of others who also had kids with food allergies who we all tried at the same time, basically. Like, hey, let's let's do this. And I'll tell you, my reaction was, I don't want to do this. I mean, I didn't have, I was young, so I didn't have a ton of access to research. But from what I'd heard, what I'd read, I read that this wasn't going to work. But my parents wanted this so badly for me that they had done their homework and they wanted to throw everything at it. And they wanted to try it. Was it going to work? We didn't know. But from the, the research that they had done and the people that they had talked to, it sounded like it was safe enough to try. Just because there's no research in it didn't mean that it wasn't worth trying, especially if it was safe for my health. Because obviously they're not going to put me through a situation that's dangerous for my health, right? What parent does that to a child? Nobody does that. But they wanted to try because it was that important for them that I get healthier so that I could at least be around some of the food without getting super, super, super sick or ending up at the hospital. Right? Now, fast forward so many decades later, and I now have friends who have children who have food allergies. And they are putting their children through oral immunotherapy treatment, which is similar to what I had been through so many years back, which is essentially exposing them a little bit to what they're allergic to. This this is primarily with peanuts that the research is starting out with. But here's the thing. There's not a lot of research on this. If you look at the research on allergies and oral immunotherapy, there is not a lot out there. But for my friends who have children with severe allergies, their thought is it is actually more dangerous for them to be out in the world in school around peanut butter and jelly sandwiches than it is for us to try something that has a potential of working. Do you see where I'm going with this? That at some point we've got to let go of the how and we have to focus on what is most important. What do I want the most for me or for my child? And then how can I get it safely? Is it possible to do safely? If they had relied just on the research alone, they wouldn't have done this. Because while there is research that shows that it works, it is not robust. And it is so not robust that in fact, there are maybe a handful of physicians that are offering this therapy around the country. They're pioneers in the field, absolutely. But if you just rely on the research, their children would not have had the experience that they've had. They would not be able to be around peanuts at this age safely. Wouldn't have happened. It's got to start with what's most important to you. Do you want to get pregnant? Right? And we're talking about allergies, but it's the same concept. When you're struggling with getting pregnant, how important is that to you? And there's no judgment to that question, not at all. It's really genuinely a question I want you to ask yourself. How important is this? Is this a, oh my gosh, I need this to happen yesterday? Or is this a, well, let's see what happens and let's see where this goes. There's no judgment on where you fall on that spectrum. But ask yourself, how important is this? And if it is that important, right? If you're pregnant already and you are going through complications and you want to know what can I do to have a healthier pregnancy so I can give my baby a strong start to life, so I can do everything I can for my baby, how important is that to me? No judgment. No judgment whatsoever. You don't even have to tell me the answer, but think about it for yourself. How important is that? Because if what you're doing with your doctor is not giving you the results that you want, keep an open mind and look at some of the other alternatives to see if that can help you get to where you want to go. 
do your homework, keep an open mind about how you can make this possible and then throw everything at it. Throw everything at it that's safe for you to do. I'm doing this right now with my kiddo. And with occupational therapy, for one, I mean, there's like no research about the benefit of occupational therapy for so many different things, which is ridiculous because you hear about a lot of kids that are in occupational therapy. And I even was talking to a few friends about um, how what it's like to actually pay out of pocket for medical care because occupational therapy is not covered under insurance because there's no research that shows that it works. There's very few outcome measures that you can actually measure, except as a parent, you can tell when something's getting better with your child. Just like as a human, you can tell how things are getting better in your own health when you pay attention, right? When you really focus and let that intuition guide you. So, I mean, just being at an occupational therapist is one thing, right? That's We're already going beyond research to, to get the, the results that we're looking for. But I went one step past that. So we're working on a particular issue with my son that I thought occupational therapy could help with. And maybe it's helping a little. I'm not quite sure. I'm not totally sold on it. But I had this idea that, you know, maybe seeing a chiropractor could help too. So at his last well check with his pediatrician, I mentioned to him, to, to his uh, pediatrician, I mentioned to her that, hey, I, I'm thinking about taking him to see a chiropractor. And she immediately was like, okay, you know that that's not supported by Western medicine, right? And I said, I know, I know. That's, <laughs> I'm not doing it because there's research behind it. I know there is no research behind it. I'm doing it because I'm trusting my maternal instinct that there's something here that Western medicine cannot help with. We've tried everything that you know, and now I'm going outside of that because what's most important to me is getting him some relief. And she's wonderful. So she she just kind of had to put that caveat there. You know, she wasn't trying to dissuade me or anything. She was just, FYI, you know that this is not Western medicine supported. I said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then she trusts my instincts right? She would have informed me if my idea had gone against the medical treatment he's already undergoing, right? Because we don't want to go against what we're already trying. What we're trying to do is basically build our team of people and throw everything at it so we can finally get to the end goal that's most important, which is finding him some relief, and she acknowledged me. She said, I don't know how it works. I don't know how chiropractic works. I don't know if it's going to help you. There's no research behind it. But I trust you that if this is not working and you're not seeing the results that you're looking for, give it a try. Give it a try. And I'll be honest with you. Even if she hadn't told me that, I would have tried it anyway because I'd done my homework. And I knew that it was safe. It helps also that the, our chiropractor is a friend of mine. Um, we actually did a whole episode with her on episode 15 of Delivering Miracles if you want to know more about chiropractic and fertility and high-risk pregnancy. But I don't need her approval. And the reason I don't need it is because I've developed confidence in my instincts. And I don't say that to show off. I say that because you can do that too. I don't want you to put your life and your baby's life in one person's hands. It's like that saying that they say you're putting all your eggs in a in one basket or something, right? That's that's a thing. Why would you do that if if what you're going for is that important to you? We do that when we're scared because we don't know what the outs other solutions are, right? I've done it. Of course I've done it. Absolutely I've done it. When you don't know, you don't know what the outcome is. You don't know what the expectations are. You don't know how it's going to impact your health. Then of course you're going to do that. You're going to be scared. And so you're going to trust the one thing that you have been told to trust. And there's nothing wrong with that. If it's working for you, if your pregnancy is healthy, if you're able to manage your complications effectively, if you feel in your body that 
everything is going the way that it can and should. And that's even if you have complications, okay? But if there's something in the back of your head that's going, there has to be more. There has to be more that I can do. Then I want you to focus on that end goal of what's most important. Do your homework, keep an open mind about how you can make that possible and then throw everything at it. Everything that's safe is how you're going to get there. Now, how do you know if it's safe? How do you know? Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I personally don't ingest anything until I have done extensive research because of my food allergies, because of how sensitive my system is to really anything, including medications. I don't take anything, medications, herbs, supplements, none of it. I don't do any of that until I've done extensive research. That's me because I know my body. You know your body. What are you comfortable with? Are you comfortable with doing visualizations? Are you comfortable with doing yoga? Are you comfortable with doing taking these supplements that your doctor may not know anything about? Start with your intuition. Start with what you know about your body. Start with that. Trust that. And then let that guide the research that you do to figure out what solutions are available to you. Find the ones that sound good. Talk to the experts in the field who know about it. And then throw everything at it. Because that end goal that you're going for, whether it's to get pregnant, whether it's to stay pregnant, whether it's to have a healthy pregnancy, whether it's to help your baby or your preemie grow and thrive, whatever that is that you're working towards, you're fighting so hard for, it's possible. It just may not be possible in the most traditional ways. And that is okay, because if that's important enough, How you get there isn't as important. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's safe, it doesn't really matter. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't want to do anything that's going to hurt my baby or hurt my chances of having a baby. I don't want to do anything that I can't undo. And I I totally hear you. I was in the same place. And if I were pregnant right now, I would feel the exact same way. And the biggest pushback to this example, you know, or to this thought of I don't want to do anything that's going to be permanent or that I can't undo is the example of cancer, which is very much in line with having a high risk pregnancy because it is a matter of life and death, right? And the pushback is you don't want to risk your life if you have cancer, or in this case, you don't want to risk the life of your baby if you're pregnant by trying something that isn't proven by research, right? It's the same kind of concept. And you hear that a lot, right? You hear, and in fact, think going back to the Facebook post I mentioned at the very beginning, Ajay's pay, Facebook post, who was talking about these alternative therapies like meditation, that was something a lot of his doctor friends came back and said, hey, if you had cancer, why wouldn't you just go with what you know works? Which I'll say, I'll mention here, I have an oncologist. I don't have cancer, but for prevention, um, I do have an oncologist and he's very open. He's an MD, PhD, and he's very open about the fact that there's a lot of stuff we don't know about what works and what doesn't work. And so he's all about this alternative therapy. But anyway, that aside, right, I agree with you. Of course, you're going to be risk averse when there's a little tiny person's life literally in your hands. Of course, you're going to be risk averse. You should be risk averse. That's how you save a life. That's how you protect yourself and your baby. But that's also why you have to do your homework. Look into different therapies. Start with, you know, rewind for a second. Start with what's most important. What is most important to you right now that you want so desperately? What is that? Is it to get pregnant? Is it to manage your pregnancy complications? to stop the preterm contractions, to bring your blood pressure down, to bring your sugar levels down? What is that? What is most important to you? Start there. 
And then yes, look at the research, talk to your doctor about what the research says, but don't just rely on the research that exists because there is limitations to what can be researched. There's limitations on the ethical nature of that research. You cannot actually study everything. It is physically impossible to study everything. And the second is, and the really the truth is, research is where the money is. And I say this as somebody who spent years doing psychological research with infants and parents and mothers. Okay, research is where the money is. The research that gets funded is the research that they know is going to bring them back money based on the results. That's the truth. I don't mean to sound super jaded, but that's the, that's just the truth. That's how it works. So between the fact that not everything can be tested, for example, you're not going to put a, a pregnant woman in a situation where giving her treatment is going to save her life and not giving her treatment is going to potentially let her die. That's completely unethical and that would never fly. So you're never going to be able to test the efficacy of certain treatments if that's the case. And then you add on the fact that research is where the money is. The, the, the actual research that's out there is very limited in scope. Is it important? Absolutely. Look at it. See what's out there. But know that the solution that you're looking for on how to get to your end goal, whatever that end goal is, may not lie in research. So find a solution that's going to complement the medical care that you're receiving. Find something that's low risk enough that is going to help you get that end goal, whatever that is. It is absolutely possible. But you've got to start with what's most important. Focus on that end goal that's most important for you. Do your homework. Keep an open mind about how you can make that possible and then throw everything at it. That's how you get to what you need. That's how you get to what you want. And it is absolutely possible to do safely. When you start with what you know about your body and you start with what you want the most. And then you make a calculated, informed decision. So what are these alternative therapies? You might be wondering. Well, chiropractic is one. And I'll be really honest with you right here. There is not a lot of research about chiropractic and how it improves fertility and how it improves pregnancy and how it helps postpartum. But it helps. And there are a lot of people who can speak to that. And if you're interested in learning more, I talked to my friend, Dr. Anjali, who we actually see for my son uh, in episode 15. So check that out. There is acupuncture or acupressure, which uh, will be coming up in upcoming episodes. We're going to talk about that and how it improves fertility and pregnancy health. Again, there's some research more than chiropractic, but not a ton. And it is an alternative therapy. So there's that. Chinese medicine. We talked a little bit about that with Dr. Mark Sklar, which I believe was on episode 35, but I'll link to it in the show notes so you can access it immediately. There's psychotherapy and mental health counseling, which does have an impact on physical health. So that's something to consider. There's wellness counseling or coaching, which is what I do to help women get pregnant and stay pregnant and help you manage your pregnancy complications so you can have a healthy pregnancy. There is massage therapy, which is actually something I'm about to try in just a few days. So I'll keep you posted on how that goes. So there are a lot of alternative therapies that you can consider. They're there. And if you want something that badly, whatever that is, to get pregnant, to stay pregnant, to have a healthy baby, to raise a child, to grow and thrive, whatever that is, to manage your pregnancy complications, focus on that. Focus on that end goal that's so important to you. Do your homework and keep an open mind about how you can make that possible and then throw 
everything at it. Because if it's that important to you, you will find a way and you will find a way that's safe to get you what you need. It is absolutely possible. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you could head over to iTunes and leave a review so we can get ranked even higher so more women who are struggling with fertility and high-risk pregnancy and prematurity can get access to the tips and information and advice that we talk about on Delivering Miracles. And if you are struggling to get pregnant, if you are struggling through pregnancy complications and you want to know what more you can do, reach out because I know I can help. Head over to parijadeshpande.com and I would love to hear from you. Send me a message and I can tell you a little bit more. Also, I would love to stay in touch. So follow me on Twitter Instagram and Facebook at Barijat Desh. That's P A R I J A T D E S H. It would be really nice if there was just one place to go and look for answers and know that that gave us everything we needed to help us bring a baby safely into this world. And maybe someday that'll happen. But for now, it starts with us. It starts with focusing on your body, knowing what your body is, what it needs, and then being open to finding ways to get what you need most and what is most important to you. Because the more that you throw at it, the better your chances of getting what you want as quickly as possible. Take it one day one step at a time, you can do this.